Hi everybody, this is Pamela Coey and I'm going to be working in acrylic uh, to start these brand new 48 by 48 inch gessoed panels and they're on the floor and it's one of the ways that I like to work really large just to get started and um, I've shown a lot of cold wax medium techniques but I haven't really shown much with acrylic. So uh, I have a new class going on right now and it is focusing on um, a color and design in cold wax and oils. I do all of my demos in cold wax medium with oil paint but for those who are taking the course who work in acrylic I thought I would just sort of show some of the other things that I do uh, sometimes with the acrylic before I move into the cold wax medium. So. Uh, these are large scale so you'll you'll be able to follow along as i uh, work through these panels and i'm pretty sure that they're going to end up being cold wax and oil because i like to combine the two processes together i enjoy working with both mediums i hope you enjoy it one of the first things i'm going to do is tape off these edges and i'm just using regular um, packing tape here. Sometimes I've used uh, more of the painter's tape, but in this case I'm going to use this packaging tape. It seems to work pretty well. I'm going to tape off this one now. Uh, and also this painting over here is um, done with cold wax medium and some uh, oil paint and it's very drippy so I can work in the same way with acrylic paint to have it be sort of you know equally drippy um, so that's the cool thing about working with cold wax medium um, on one painting but then you can work on acrylic on another painting can get really similar effects and um, that's not really that hard to do. It's just um, a matter of learning a few different techniques and what to add to your cold wax medium and oils. And um, it was done on the wall and it was done mostly with brushes and uh, just wanted to kind of get some uh, early stage painting down and I'm going to probably do some similar things with these other panels in acrylic but then move into the cold wax medium later but I just wanted to let you know that this this painting here um, was done with cold wax medium and oils so okay I'm gonna try some really crazy tools as well I like to work on two panels at a time even if the panels don't end up staying together it's just fun because it's a bigger surface to work on thought I'd start out with some mark making just simple stuff I've got some graphite powder here and I've got this uh, feather duster that I've been wanting to try. Just haven't had a chance to do it yet. So this is messy stuff, but it's really fun. All right, here is my feather duster. So I've been dying to do this just to see what would happen. Part of it is just sort of like getting the feel for like the amount of area that I'm going to be covering here on this painting and it's a lot of area so I think it's just becoming familiarized with that. I was amazed at what you can do with just you know black and white before you even get into any other color of any kind. And I've got erasers here. I've got, you know, all of my mark making tools here that I usually start with no matter what kind of painting I'm doing. Whoops. So I've got, um, you know, these square art graph and I've got thick pencils, thin pencils. So I'm just going to continue to make some marks on here. Here's just a little bit of water in this container for these mark making tools that are water soluble.
Time to put on the gloves. I'm going to add just a bit of airbrush medium to this. You can see that or not. Makes it just a little bit thinner. You can see that. It's better to add that than water because water is going to make that polymer weaker. Okay, and I've got this really long tool. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is kind of fun. I'm treating both panels as one, as if they're just one connected thing. And if there's a shape that I like, I'll restate it. Like I kind of like this really big shape here, but I want to vary the line. I don't want it to be all the same thickness. So some places I want it thicker than others and I just have to restate it like that. It's really fun to have tools like this that take away control because there's absolutely no expectation. There's nothing that I could do and you know to plan what I'm doing right now. It's just all play, uh, mark making, how can I vary the mark. And this is just a long rod that I got at the hardware store. It was like 15 cents or something. I don't even know what it's for, but I just saw it and I grabbed a couple of them and uh, I'm sure you can find these too. This is clearly not intentional. The time for intentional marks comes later. So when I'm doing this, I don't have to think about that. I can just, you know, have fun. So right now this is just black acrylic paint. It's ivory black and some airbrush medium in it to make it thinner. And then I will switch to another color. Probably just add it to the same container. And then I want to, while this black paint is still uh, wet, I want to I'm going to switch around here, lay this down, and I like to use these brown papers, and I do use these a lot. So these are just kind of transfer papers. I think carpenters use these, and so I'm just going to squirt some colors down. In some places I'm going to put it where the black was, and other places I'm not, but uh, just kind of be generous with the paint. These are Nova color paints. I love them because they're liquid. They're kind of a really great consistency. And I start to do some mono printing like this. Let's get some activated surface here, not knowing what to expect and not worrying too much about it at all. So it's picking up some black and then because the black is still wet and then transferring it. Just 
trying to get an even distribution of everything I do. So there's repetition of shape and line and color. And then you can see this paper is getting kind of um, pretty saturated with paint. So I didn't have a roller and I just wrapped um, sort of this um, fabric onto the end of it. You can kind of see there. So instead of having the normal nap on there, I'm going to use this. See what happens. Just like a brayer, you have to charge it. But I'm getting a really interesting texture here. freezer paper but I like it because I'm going to use the shiny side and put it on this wet paint because it's not going to soak up the paint. So again monoprint. 